Thank you all for coming today. It's my absolute pleasure to be able to talk to you about AI and the future of rural healthcare. I want to start with a principle called Moore's Law that's really about progress. This is a principle from computer science that basically says computer processing speed is going to double every two years. And I want you to think about that principle, but apply it to artificial intelligence instead. My version of that is the rate of AI improvement is faster than we can plan conferences to talk about it. In December of 22, last year, it broke the news that an AI for the first time had passed the USMLE step one medical licensure exam. And that was really important. It, it passed the exam. Everybody was up in arms about it, but we're really no longer talking about passing the exam. We're talking about acing the exam. Today, Open Evidence AI has already become the first AI in history to score above 90% on the exam. Pretty soon, that's going to be 100%, and it's not even going to be in question. We're going to see this continue to grow. Soon, it'll pass step three, and then it'll be a fully licensed physician ready to operate. So the first use that I see for AI is in preparation to be a rural healthcare provider. It can be a study partner for those medical board exams. The second is to use AI as an AI-powered medical scribe. This is a tool that already exists today. You can buy it. You can use it in your clinic, in your hospital. It's called DeepScribe AI. You click a button and it starts listening to a patient encounter and it transcribes the entire encounter. It's smart enough to filter out small talk. And then it takes those and it generates complete EHR ready notes for you. So you don't have to you know, have a scribe in the room with you, a nurse in the room with you, medical assistant. It's going to do that for you. It's preparing your charts for you. All you have to do is review them at the end of the day for accuracy or after the encounter for accuracy. A third use is to use AI as a diagnostic co-pilot. This is a tool called Glass AI Health. It's currently in beta, but you can access it now. The way it works is you provide a patient summary and then you click a little button. It says generate differential diagnosis. It's going to generate a differential diagnosis for you. Then you click a second button, generate clinical plan. It's going to tell you how to treat that patient. You have a, an option at the end to vote it up or vote it down as being accurate or not. So it's actually learning from your feedback and it's going to get more accurate over time to provide better and better health care. And I see this primarily is being used as a second opinion before you call your physician buddy down the street or you call that specialist that you're thinking about referring to just to make sure that you're on the right track. Finally, and this is my favorite to share with you because it gets a little bit speculative and it's really talking about the near future rather than today, is the use of AI to serve as a medically trained companion. I think about companionship primarily as a form of care in two different settings. I'm sure there are others as well that you could think about as well. I'm thinking about nursing home and hospice care, and I'm thinking about children's hospitals where families can't be available 24-7 to provide that kind of companionship, but it's nonetheless critically important for those patients. What you see on the screen here is Keanu Reeves. He's not my friend. He's not my neighbor. He's not my relative. He's not my cousin. He didn't pose for these photos for me. These are AI generated photos. I just asked for images of Keanu Reeves dressed as a hospice nurse, and this is what it gave me. The technology exists today to create live video as well. You combine that with large language models like uh, ChatGPT, and you combine it with voice emulation technology, and you get to something very interesting. The first person to do this is going to make a billion dollars by making a business out of it. If Keanu Reeves isn't your favorite, then maybe it's Meryl Streep. You can see here, it looks like Meryl Streep, but something's a little bit off. The technology will get there. Give it time. My personal choice would have been Patrick Stewart, Captain Jean-Luc Picard himself. He's who I want to be my hospice provider. So take just a moment and listen. How are you feeling today, Mr. McKinsey? Is there anything I can help you with? What you just heard was actually my voice modulated to sound like Patrick Stewart's. That's not even necessary. There's other tools that you can type in text. It'll give you the voice. Other tools like ChatGPT that'll actually generate what it has to say and use that voice. That's where I think we're going in the near future. Thanks for having me today. It's been my pleasure. Mm -hmm.